This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We come together as the people of God on the first day of the week to begin this week in praise and thanksgiving to our Lord and King. To begin the week setting our hearts and minds on Christ in order that we may live as His true disciples. Praise God to Father Almighty, Son, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our opening hymn is Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord, Let's Stand and Sing.
faith we profess in the Apostles' Creed, let us join in this historic confession of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. If we claim to be without sin, the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let's join in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As forgiven people, let us stand and greet each other with signs of reconciliation.
Children, will please come forward for today's children's message. You just want to stay there? That's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, I was a youth director, or actually, this is one of the times when we actually had a youth director. Kind of alternate. When we had a youth director at St. Matthew's, or it's one that we didn't have, and Sharon and I served as youth directors. In preparation for a vacation Bible school one time, uh, the youth director decided that one of the activities was going to be to tie balloons. And so he got a uh, clown to come out and show the youth and show us how to tie balloons. And uh, it's not that hard to do. Even I can do it. So uh, this past uh, spring when we did our uh, uh, shoe drive and uh, our shoe giveaway and our spring uh, uh, Easter festival, uh, I pulled out the old balloons and I tied a few and uh, got them all set up. And like I said, it ain't that hard. <laughs> anyway, so one of the kids, I made a balloon for her and I gave it to her or something, something like that. And I just called it a critter. She came back and she had popped her. She wanted to I said, okay, that's fine. She said, can you make me another rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't see it, but that's what she saw. I mean, she's a kid. She has this creativity, this imagination. Kids play pretend. And it's a good thing. This creativity is a gift from God. It's something that we're created with so that we can see beyond what we can see in the, the, the perceived world. It's how we, we have this imagination so that we can see a better world. A world that we can then improve upon. That we can make, that things can be better because we have the imagination. We have that creativity. So, anyway, this is creativity. It could be a rabbit. Anyway. The uh, silly song is a creative song and honors God as the creator. If I were a butterfly. <laughs> Which I've said before, but okay. It's a, it's a fun song. If I were a butterfly, thank you, Lord, for giving me wings. And if I were a robin in the tree, thank you, Lord, that I could sing. And if I were a fish in the sea, I'd wiggle my tail and I'd get it with me. But I just thank you, Father, for making
we have here is Jeremiah 18, 1 through 10, verse 10. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you a message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaking from the clay was marked in his hands, and so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as the potter does, declares the Lord. Like the clay in the hand of the potter, so you are in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, or destroyed, and if that nation I warn repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight, and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I intended to do for it. And we'll skip over here to, to, to John chapter 1. And that's the first five verses. You're familiar with this, but it's still really, really good. He says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. These are the words of God. something special uh, today. Uh, several weeks ago, uh, Jerry Kirby pulled me aside and said, I heard a song that was just absolutely wonderful that y'all need to do. And it's called, I Can't Even Walk Without You Holding My Hand. And I said, yeah, okay, that sounds really good. And what I didn't tell him at the time that I told him later was that a few months before him suggesting this song to me, Janice had suggested the very same song. So I felt like, okay, both of them unknowingly have suggested this. This is something we need to do. And so I'm going to read, we're going to sing it for you, but I was going to read the lyrics to you. I thought number one would surely be me. I thought I could be what I wanted to be. I thought I could build on life's sinking sand, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain's too high and the valley's too wide. Down on my knees, I learn to stand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I thought I had done a lot on my own. I thought I could make it all alone. I thought of myself as a mighty big man, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand.
technical note, especially for our friends that are watching over the live stream, uh, my account was hacked, and so if there's some sort of unexpected uh, appearance on the live stream, you might see uh, jump up and let's jump up and run over and turn it off. I mean, because, uh, and, and, uh, I'm, I'm trying to fix it, but it takes a while. So we're uh, conti continuing our sermon series on the uh, Apostles' Creed. And even though the, the Apostles' Creed itself does not appear in Scripture, it is based on Scripture. And uh, Scripture is that yardstick, that standard, by which all other things that, that we know are measured. It's the, it's, the, it's the rod that keeps things consistent and constant throughout the throughout the decades, the millennials, it's the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we, he does give us the gifts of music and art and these other things, the creeds, the rites, the, rites, the rituals, that do reveal God to us. But the scripture is, is like I said, the rod stick, the, the measuring rod, by which all of the things are measured. Now, Christianity from the very beginning has kind of been divided. The world of the Roman Empire was divided between the old Greek Empire and the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire speaking Latin, the old Greek Empire speaking Greek. And Israel was in the, the Greek-speaking part of the empire. It was created kind of a division for a long time. Uh, in 325 AD, uh, Constantine became the emperor of the Roman Empire. And he didn't want to live in Rome, he wanted to live in Constantinople, it was now Istanbul. And so he moved the capital and uh, the, he was also the one that made uh, Christianity legal. So he called together the uh, bishops and he said, okay, we're now in this religion, we want you to define it. What does it actually believe? And then he had a meet at a place called Nicaea, and they used the Apostles' Creed as a model and created the Nicene Creed. Now if you go into an Eastern Orthodox Church, Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Syriac, um, uh, the Coptic Church, these other churches, which aren't very common here in the United States, but uh, they're common in other parts of the world, um, you won't see the Apostles' Creed because we have the Nicene Creed. And the Nicene, it's not that they object to the Apostles' Creed, everything is, is there, but the Nicene Creed is what we agree upon, and so that's the Creed of the Church. In your hymnals, you'll see that the uh, Nicene Creed is number 880, the Apostles' Creed is number uh, 881. They're on opposite pages. So you can compare the two and see how one, how the Nicene Creed is built upon the, the Apostles' Creed. And we run into that this morning in, in, the, uh, in the verse that we're reading, uh, one of those differences. The Apostles' Creed begins with, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Now the Nicene Creed also begins the same way. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth but adds, of all things visible and invisible. As you see, it means the same thing. It's just expanding upon it. Now, this thing about things visible and invisible. You know, we live in this creation. We are surrounded by uh, the things that we see, the things that we know, the things that we encounter in creation. This creation made by God. When I was growing up, uh, especially when I was camping in the Boy Scouts, we camped uh, most of the time in the mountains of southern New Mexico and uh, uh, the Sacramento Mountains. And I would love being out there at night under the stars with these huge mountains. I mean, these hills around here, folks. <laughs> but these huge mountains and the power and the majesty of the mountains and the pines and the Ponderosas that stood around me. And to look up in the night sky, the, the vast, endless uh, infinity of space, and see those stars, and think of the power and the distances involved, and, and just see those thousands and thousands of points of light, and the power, and, and, and just felt the majesty, and would be just in awe of God. This, this mighty, mighty creation. So the things I love about being out here is being able to see the Milky Way when I step outside my door. 
didn't get to see that for years when I was living in San Antonio. But to see this, 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 just to contemplate all that, and to see this, this magnificent power of God on display, and here I was, just little baby step. And yet God loved me anyway. And it's not only that, but, but to think about the, 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 the minute, the details, the every little, every little tiny, tiny bit of creation, those things that we can't see, down to the tiniest little molecules. When I was, when I was uh, in computers, uh, one of the things we, we, they demonstrated a new technology, one of the conventions I went to, was something called a blue line. Uh, it's now called, they rebranded it blue red. It's, it's the predecessor of blue. And what it was, it, it's a focused laser beam that etches uh, the, uh, the computer chip down to three molecules wide. Three molecules. This is all God's creation. This is all God's handiwork. And it's amazing. It's astounding when you think about the, the, the scale involved and what it takes to do all this. All these things that we can see and that we can encounter, the way that we perceive what, what the sun rising in the morning and the, the stars at night, the, the fragrance of the fields, all of this is part of creation. I believe in God the Father, the Almighty Maker of all of this, heaven and earth, all things seen and unseen. There's this great mystery that lies beyond our perceptible world. <clears throat> There's more to creation than what we can see. It's not just the things get so small that we're unable to perceive it. But, but God created the heavens as well, and the earth, things that unseen. That part of creation that we know nothing about, that great mystery, God, Jesus gives us the assurance. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If that were not so, but I told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you so to be with me, so that where I am, you may be also. There is this creation where we live and breathe and exist and, and live all our lives. One thing that, standing in those meadows when I was growing up, thinking of the time involved, those looking at these, uh, the light coming from those, those uh, stars for thousands and thousands of years, traveling through the empty of, emptiness of space, and here I am, living for only maybe 70, 80 years at best. It's amazing. My life is just a blink of an eye, and yet there's this vast cosmos for our home right now. But we have this blessed assurance that there's a home beyond that, that we cannot see that great as Shakespeare said, that great undiscovered country from which no man returns. This creation is the home for our bodies, but there is another place that is a, uh, a home for our souls, filled with just as much wonder, just as much majesty, and just as much awe. God not only created the substance of creation, the stuff, but things about and talking about in growing, being the computer field, uh, the difference between hardware and software is the hardware stuff you can kick. <laughs> Many times have I wanted to. But it's not just the substance of creation, that, that, that the hardware that's been made. But God also made all those physical laws that govern things like motion, things like quantum mechanics, electromagnetism, thermodynamics. The, the, and those things that, that are yet undiscovered, that govern all the, the matter and, and the energy that we see. There are also things that we study, and each discovery helps us understand God. Everything that we find out that's true reveals to us something about the maker. This creation is not a static object, but a dynamic, ever-changing one. Like the potter. God creates and recreates and makes new and reborn. And every moment there's, there's things that destroy and things that are, that are brought back or things that didn't exist before. God is constantly remaking and renewing. Old things pass away and something new is formed. It's 
It's dynamic. And God not only created all the things, but everything, but all the, 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 the stuff, the, the laws of government. Now, when I was uh, in, uh, in grade school, uh, we had something called room mothers. And uh, you might, I don't know if you're familiar with this, uh, depending on your age, probably you may or may not be. Uh, room mothers were, were the mothers of the students, and they would help the teacher, they'd work with the teacher to provide things such as uh, birthday kid, birthday parties, when a kid had a birthday in class. Uh, those days they would also be providing transportation for field trips, uh, and so the things like that. Well, one time my mother came back, and, and, my, and my mother would be a uh, room mother for me one year, and then my sister one year, and then my brother one year, and then rotate through. Um, every, every over, over the over the period of these uh, grade school years, she came back from one time uh, when she was room uh, room mother for my year, and uh, she had been to another mother's house. And she came back and immediately forbid me from ever going to that house. Okay, and this was this was not someone I was likely to go to their house anyway. But then uh, that decided for me. I was not supposed to go over there, and. She told me that what bothered her was that when she walked into this house, there on the, on the dining room table was a model of heaven. Now I really wish I had gone over there. But I have no idea what bothered her about this. But that, that she didn't want me, that it really kind of, she didn't want me to see it. We as humans are not comfortable with things we can't see, with things that we can't control. This model of heaven is somehow taking what is in our imagination and projecting it as if it is true or if it's fact. We sometimes have very difficult, our pride and our ego doesn't let God be God. We need to understand. We need to, to know the mystery. We, can't, we don't like the mystery. And yet, God is greater than we are. What things he's created, maker of heaven and earth, all things seen and unseen, there's some things that we're never going to see. We may not have the capacity to see or understand what these things are. We should always search for truth. That's true. We should always look for truth because uh, there's, there's the, the, the uh, analogy of watch being the fact that there's a watch tells you that there's a watchmaker. The fact that there is creation tells us that there's a creation. But we in our minds, we don't, we, we don't understand these mysteries. There's some things that one of the things that we cannot completely understand is an existence without time or substance. Time or space. We can't even conceive of that. That's nothing, that is beyond our comprehension. And yet, we come up with ideas and theories and things that try to explain that. The ancient Greeks, the ancient uh, civilizations that surrounded the birth of Christianity, these, these Greek and, and, uh, and Roman gods, there was this some primordial substance that chaos came and did something with, that Kronos uh, uh, managed and created for humans to, to do this primordial substance. But God created even that. There is an origin that we don't know, that we can't understand, and, and, and we're trapped. The idea is we're trapped in this, in this, in our perception. That we cannot see what God sees. Our maker, our creator, is so far much more than what we are. And we try to explain it away in our, we try to fit God in our little box. And we still do it. Since 1927, the dominant theory has been something called the Big Bang heard of the Big Bang Theory. And there's certainly plenty of evidence that it's not created by people who are foolish. They, they had some basis for making coming up with this theory. But in the end, they still can't explain why, why nothing nowhere went bang for no reason. There was something that went bang. But no, all things proceed from God. And all things are resolving back to We acknowledge God as maker of heaven and earth. 
And that exposes to us just how weak and small we are. It reminds us of how much we don't know. How much we are not supposed to know. We seek for God. But God the Creator, I believe in this Creator God who's created heavens and earth, all things visible and unvisible, even things I can't come up with. You know, when I think about God, the one that stumps me is time. That is something I would have missed out It's a good thing I'm not going to, because that I would have missed out Albert Einstein was a great genius, recognized. But he was also a man of great faith. He was a devout Jew. He professed Jehovah God, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, Jacob, to be his God. And he was keenly aware that the pursuit of knowledge, that endless pursuit, was a pursuit for God. And that there was joy simply in the pursuit. There was joy in the adventure of trying to discover as much as possible. Before the more we know about God, the more we, the more we know about creation, the more we know about God. So we acknowledge God, the Creator, as an act of faith. When Jeremiah goes to the potter's house, God reminds him that the potter has a plan. He has a vision. He has a design in mind. There is a purpose to creation. There is an order to it. We may look around and see things as being chaotic, things we can't explain, but God does have something in mind. We read Genesis chapter 2, and we see where, where, where does creation begin? It creates a tree of life with a river of living water and God, its presence. Where does Revelation 22 end? With a tree of life and a river flowing from the throne of God. There is a trajectory to get us back to where we started. God has a plan, God has a design, and even if we cannot see that plan, and God cannot see that design, it is still something that exists because God, our Creator, does not throw things together arbitrarily. But He has everything work for good, for His good. And we are a part of that. There is a contemporary song, Christian song, I know the song that I sang earlier before you had to sing, nobody knew it. But I like it, so we'll learn it. <laughs> but there's a lot of good songs, and then one thing I, I, I enjoy about the, the music that uh, uh, Meredith selects is that often there are new songs that give us new insights. But uh, there's a contemporary song, and it has a great melody, it has a great beat, I like it, up to one point it has lousy theology. There's a, a line in it, and I've had to sing this when others... Uh, so the worship leaders have chosen the music for me. But it has this one line that says, we are free in ways that we never should be. No. God, not, God did not create things by accident. We are free by design. We are free for, for purpose. We do not understand that purpose, but we are free. That's one thing that God gave us. Free will is part of his design. It's part of his purpose. No, no detail is overlooked. No detail is arbitrary. There is a way, there is a purpose for each one of them. And there's a purpose for our freedom. And our duty is to use that gift of freedom. To find out God's will. But more importantly, to find out how to love God. And how to love our neighbor as ourselves. Our freedom was given to us so that we can discover what God wants us to discover. Each piece of creation has a place. Each piece of creation has a purpose. I don't know if you've been just outside Fredericksburg. There's a, a relatively new state park. It's only been open for, for, two, for a couple of years. Uh, the, the railroad tunnel, just south of, of, uh, of uh, Fredericksburg. It's on the road between Fredericksburg and Comfort, not the main road, not 87, the one that goes around. Uh, 
It's a railroad tunnel that was built in the 1920s. Then there used to be a railroad that goes, they used to go from San Antonio to Fredericksburg. And they got to this mountain and they had to build this 200 foot tent tunnel. Well, of course, the railroad no longer exists. The tunnel is abandoned. And like most caves and tunnels and bridges and th things here in Texas, every year it gets a colony of bats. Now, bats are things that uh, some people are afraid of, and of course, we, we realize the good that they do, the purpose that they serve in creation. The bats eat all the insects that destroy crops and that, uh, that damage our livestock. They're good things to have around. Even though they're, you know, these kind of crazy when they're flying, they're, 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 we, we, we come to appreciate bats in this part of Texas. And a colony, of course, of Mexican retail bats has settled in this cave. And you can go and see the, the, every night, just as you do in a lot of caves around here, the flight of the bats as they leave. Well, Sharon and I one time, one evening, we were in the area, and so we decided we were going to watch the bats come out of the tunnel. Now, the south end of the tunnel is on, uh, is on the state park land. The north end of the tunnel is actually on the private land. You can't go through the tunnel. It'd be kind of dangerous to go through the tunnel anyway. But, uh, so they had this observation place on the south end of the tunnel. So we get out, and of course, if you've ever been to a cave or a tunnel or a bridge where the bats come out, you know that there's those few that wake up early and they start uh, fluttering around the entrance, but they don't really go anywhere. They just kind of flutter around for a while. And then at some point, for some reason, the rest of the colony wakes up and they all get up and form these beautiful moving clouds of thousands and hundreds of bats. It's, a, it's quite a sight to behold, but I'm sure I'm sure most of you have already seen have seen this. So we were out there and, and we were watching the, those those first little uh, early risers up, and they were hanging around the uh, the north end of the cave, the south end of the cave, around the park. And the sun was going down; it was getting closer and closer. And a few more of the early risers were were, were going around the cave, and over the hill comes a red-tailed hawk, and he starts circling. And now the bats aren't stupid. A lot of them started moving to the other end of the tunnel. But that hawk, he was patient. He stayed. And at some point, he did swoop through the, the thing, and he got his dinner. There's a purpose and, and a, for every piece of creation. And there's a spot for everything, including you. You have a place. Genesis 1 says, God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created, and male and female he created them. Bless them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, and every creeping thing that crawls upon the face of the earth. It is empirically observable that we are the dominant creature on this planet. It's empirically observable that we control the environment and control the other uh, animals that, that, uh, in, that inhabit this planet, plants. And sometimes we've done very well, and sometimes we haven't done well at all. But there's no doubt that we are able to manipulate our environment beyond the ability of other creatures. We can travel to the deepest depths of the ocean. We've built machines that can let us fly in the air. We've even been able to encapsulate our own environment and go beyond our atmosphere. We're the only creature that's walked on our own moon. God created us with this ability, but with this ability also comes great responsibility. Genesis 12, 2. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to keep it and to till it. He till a garden to make it productive. You till a garden so that they flourish. We've been given this power of dominion in order for us to fulfill that duty of stewardship. And that duty extends not only to the, to the, to the things, the animals, the creatures, and the, the nature that we see, but also to the people around us. We have a responsibility to encourage them so that they may also flourish, so they may also grow and, and obtain the best that they can be, the best version of themselves. We have a duty to all of creation, including each other. 
God designed you and created you to be a part of this creation. You have a place in God's great plan. A place that's right for you. A place where you can grow, where you can flourish. A place where you can enjoy everything that God wants you to enjoy. He created you to enjoy life. You belong. And God's command, God's plan is not complete without you. Ephesians 12.10, Paul uses the word poema. Again, that's where we get the word poem. And it, it, it doesn't completely, the, the word poema, when you see it in Greek, it, can, it translates a lot, of, a, a lot of ways. Work of art. Uh, the way that uh, most, uh, or a lot of the translations in English, you are God's masterpiece. His masterpiece. You are not just assembled, but carefully crafted to be who you are. Carefully put together, knitted together, to be this, 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 this great masterpiece of God that he loves, that he treasures. You belong here. You are to be exactly who you are. The best version of yourself, and that's the challenge that we have to find what that is, but you belong. Notice also in the story don't yeah. worry, it's just a little piece of creation. Yeah. Just, just keep preaching. Back? Okay. <laughs> Red tail hawk? Okay. <laughs> but St. Matthew's, they had a back in the sanctuary and on the ceiling, and someone had the idea that they get a BB gun. Oh. They were bad shot. Oh. Many years we had this, this pattern built of BB guns right at the top of our <laughs> sanctuary. Anyway, um, but notice that God, not only in the story of the potter, not only does he create, but he also destroys. To make something different. There's things that God creates, but there's things that also God does not create. We are given dominion over the birds, the air, and the fish, and the sea, but we can neither fly nor can we breathe underwater. God gives us abilities and inabilities, even for a purpose. And we don't always understand. Sometimes we find that very, very frustrating. We have... There's a cat down there. Never mind. But <laughs> we sometimes find it very frustrating. But we can't do what we want. We find it very frustrating that, 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 that we're not exactly who we think we should be. That might just have to stop. <laughs> The mouse is too interesting. Okay. It's creation. It's creation. What can I say? Good visual. Now, notice it doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, 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 you know, one thing I, I love to say, and obviously I love to say, I come here and do silly songs and stuff. It doesn't matter if I'm good or not. I love to say I wish I had this deep, booming voice. I would really like to have that deep, you know. Or, you know, hit those low notes. I can't do it. But I'm not to see that. And that's, that's, that's good. That's fine. We also don't understand when, when God does not create us in a way that we consider normal. We don't understand when people are born without arms or legs, when they're born without eyes or ears that don't work. We get frustrated and angry. When we're created without a, within a condition that shortens our expected lifespan, it hurts us. God's going to understand. It's hard to keep this way in your life. <laughs> Where is he now? On the wall. On the rail. Oh, now he's on the rail. Open the door. Open the door, Robert. I've heard the expression church mouse. Yes. Okay. We actually have a lot of church mouse. We do. Bless his heart. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. The 
doors open. Yes. And we know that it's good for him to go out that door. Yes. That would be the best thing for him to do. Yes. Now he doesn't understand that. No. We don't he doesn't know that Robin did that. But we know what that's best for him. And so what's the what what would be the good for him, even though he can't understand it? To chase him out. We can't do that anymore. I was gonna do that when he was on the speaker. <laughs> Something tells me Meredith is not a lot of distance, okay. <laughs> but but we are we have to be over the creation. We if we have a long stick, we could brush him down, chase him out the door, which would be better for him. Not that we want to harm him, not okay. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah, you get a picture of it. Okay. I'm just gonna click this here. <laughs> but Paul but Paul speaks Paul speaks of uh, a thorn in his flesh and the story uh, and uh, there's good evidence that this is probably uh, uh, epilepsy. That was kind of an expression, an idiom for epilepsy, though the, the scripture doesn't actually use it. But what, is, what, is, what does he say about this, this thing that he doesn't really want? He says,
created us for yourself, and our soul is restless until we find rest in you. We thank you for the beauty abounding in this creation of all things that you've given us. We stand in awe of your power and your majesty, for you alone are God, beyond all that we can conceive. We thank you for the gift of love, that you would care for us enough to send your Son to die for us, that we may enter into your holy presence. Help us to grow to be true disciples. Help us to clear away the, the, the slag that, that, that builds upon our heart, those walls that we build between each other, the walls that we build between you and ourselves. We lift up before you those things that are heavy in our heart and mind, those people who are suffering from illness and ailments, those people who are lost in chaos and confusion, those people that are suffering from economic hardship, those who need you the most, and those who think they need you the least. My God, we, we pray for, for this community, our state, and our nation. We pray for wise leadership that will lead us into, into a society of justice and prosperity. We pray for compassion and healing between peoples. We pray for the eradication of, of, of hate and division that we may truly see your image in each one that we meet, that they are your masterpiece as much as we are. My God, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, our example and our teacher and our Savior. And so, in the words that he taught us to pray, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Is there anyone that has a joy that they'd like to share, a blessing that they'd like for, for us to pray, or a concern they'd like for the community to pray over? Dawn. Yes, I saw Marla and Chuck Fitz, and they send their greetings to everybody. Oh. Marla and Chuck. Marla and Chuck Fitz. Fitz. Mighty God, we thank you for old faces, familiar faces. We ask that you bless the department that they will be able to come and join us here and worship in this sanctuary as part of your glorious congregation. Hey, this morning, in my prayer time, I was thinking about identity and, and how we were created with a purpose and a plan. And, and I see so many young people that are so confused about their identities and even maybe I mean, it goes very deep. So this morning, I would just like to pray that especially our young people, that the confusion be broken off Almighty God, we pray for our young people that they may see the vision that you have for them, the purpose that you have created them, the precious treasure that they are, that they are loved and, 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 and that you are on their side, constantly steering them toward what will bring them true joy, true fulfillment, that, that bliss. It comes from loving you and being surrounded by love. Grant them clarity. Grant them, grant them guidance. Grant us the words to speak that we may help them along their journey. We ask in your name. Amen. All right. Our closing hymn is Rock of Ages. Let's stand and sing.
and go, that instead of making you wait for me to get there to bless the food, to bless the food now, so that you can go ahead and start eating. <laughs> Almighty God, we thank you for the food, we thank you for the blessing, the, the bounty of your creation. We thank you for the hands that prepared it. Bless the food to the use of our bodies, and us to your service. Amen. Amen. Now hear the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.